In the first part of this summary, we explored the concept of cash flow cycles and breaking free from the daily grind, explored the contrasting philosophies of rich dad versus poor dad, and touched on additional topics. Now in part two, we'll find out more about the history of taxes, hidden strategies used by the wealthy to be richer, challenges to building wealth, and a whole lot more. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap the notification button so you won't miss any of our videos. Let's continue. For lesson four, let's talk about how taxes started and the influential roles of corporations. The rich dad strategically navigated the financial game by using corporations. They say that corporation is a key secret among the wealthy. The rich don't just accept increased taxes, they respond with their financial clout and determination to bring about change. Throughout much of human history, taxes were neither guaranteed nor resembled the current taxation landscape. In earlier times, taxes were sporadic, often collected by monarchs and leaders to fund wars. There were no consistent income taxes imposed on individuals, even during periods of conflict, like in the Roman Empire. The highest tax rate was only around 3%. Originally, both England and the USA had no income taxes. It wasn't until 1874 that England introduced permanent income taxes, followed by the U.S. 39 years later with the adoption of the 16th Amendment. These permanent taxes were initially intended to target the wealthy. However, this approach ended up having unintended consequences, as the burden of these taxes fell heavily on the poor and the middle class. The clash between government bureaucracy and capitalism is a central theme as the government expands, requiring more tax dollars for support. Rich Dad viewed Poor Dad as a representative of government bureaucracy, while he saw himself as a capitalist. Consider the perspective of a politician or government employee. The incentive lies in spending money and expanding the workforce. The larger the department or organization becomes, the more established and respected it is. The motivation is to spend the entire budget, fearing that any unspent funds may be cut in the next budget cycle. Politicians often campaign on promises to cut expenses or balance the budget and how it benefits the people. Yet, these expenditures are made using the population's tax dollars. Now, let's shift to the viewpoint of Rich Dad, a business owner. His incentive is to minimize spending, hire only when necessary, and allocate capital efficiently because it's his money on the line. Rich Dad believed that what Robin Hood did was not beneficial to anyone. The economic theory of redistributing wealth from the rich to the poor and middle class only led to the government's increasing need for funds. This resulted in imposing taxes on the middle and lower classes. Meanwhile, the wealthy devised new strategies to safeguard their assets. They found a way to safeguard their wealth through the strategic use of corporations. While many of us think of corporations as large buildings and numerous employees, they are essentially legal entities represented by a piece of paper. The wealthy leverage corporations to protect their wealth, enjoying tax benefits that elude the poor and middle class. Corporate tax rates are typically lower than personal income rates, providing the rich with a significant financial advantage. Moreover, corporations serve as a shield against lawsuits. The key to this strategy lies in the flow of income. For an employee, money is earned, taxes are paid, and then spending takes place. In contrast, a business owner utilizing a corporation has income flowing through the entity. This unique setup allows the owner to cover expenses before taxes, creating a distinctive advantage. Within this framework, the business owner can designate a salary as an expense, potentially avoiding higher tax brackets. By keeping the salary moderate, they steer clear of the elevated tax rates faced by higher earning employees. The real benefit for the rich lies in pre-tax dollars where they utilize deductions and legal loopholes to minimize their overall tax burden. Now onto lesson five where rich people invent money. Let's dig into the rich's distinctive approach to wealth creation by understanding the mind and the financial operating system. While many follow the belief that a good job, hard work, and saving lead to financial freedom, the wealthy carve a different path. They know that it's always better to start building assets as soon as possible. To achieve this, you must equip yourself with financial intelligence. A well-trained mind has the potential to create substantial wealth, while an untrained one can lead to enduring poverty, and it can possibly pass down to the next generations. 
We are used to the concept of making money through finding a job, working hard, and saving up. But this can be ineffective most of the time. The best way to develop financial intelligence is to identify and create profitable business opportunities. For you to do this, you first need to gain financial intelligence. You must learn financial literacy, and this includes the ability to read and understand financial statements. These statements unveil a business's strengths and weaknesses. Then, you must also understand different investment strategies, which is the science of making money work for you. Understand the law of supply and demand and how this can affect you as a business owner and the consumers. Moreover, legal awareness is also an important aspect of gaining financial intelligence. Financial intelligence expands your perspective beyond the traditional concept of having a job. Time is changing, and your knowledge should also be updated when it comes to investment strategies, legal awareness, and comprehension of market dynamics. In addition, timing and courage take center stage in the real world. Remember that boldness often trumps mere intelligence. Financially intelligent individuals, constantly seeking and inventing new ways to invest or build assets, have more options for creating wealth. In Lesson 6, the focus is on adopting a mindset of working to learn rather than working solely for money. This encourages you to take a step back and assess what you want to happen in your life. Are you looking ahead to your future or just wait until your next paycheck? When starting a career, many wealthy people would advise to prioritize learning new skills over immediate financial gains and job security instead of opting for a better paying job that offers little in terms of skills development always choose job positions that provide the skills necessary for long-term success you need to know learn to differentiate between specialization and having a broad knowledge base while job security may be crucial for some the rich dad values continuous learning specialization and job security were priorities for the educated dad while learning was paramount for the rich dad they say that it helps to know a little about a lot. You need to enhance not just your knowledge but also your skills, such as managing cash flow, deploying capital, system management, efficient time planning, and people management, including hiring and motivating a team. You also need to learn more on sales, copywriting, and marketing, with communication skills in writing, speaking, and negotiating. You would think that these skills are irrelevant, but they're beneficial to your professional and personal growth. You need to work on yourself on how to be better, especially when you're just starting out on a job. While some advise against jumping from one company to another, many would argue that working for different companies can be a wise decision. It exposes you to a variety of relevant skills, different kinds of people, and offers long-term dividends. We all experience various challenges in life, and how we handle them speaks so much of who and what we are. In Lesson 7 in the book, gives emphasis on how the rich and the poor deal with financial difficulties. There are actually five reasons people fail to be successful in life. The first one is the fear of losing money. Both rich and poor individuals experience fear, but the key is how they deal with it. Poor individuals view losses as permanent. In contrast, the rich see losses as inevitable and temporary setbacks. The second reason is cynicism. Cynicism and self-doubt keep many people from wealth. If you don't believe it's possible to become rich, opportunities may pass by, and playing it safe becomes the norm. Rich individuals constantly analyze and explore possibilities, while the poor often criticize and focus on why things won't work. The third reason is laziness. Many feel that they don't have to work harder because they know things won't get better. They will always be on the losing end. This is why it is recommended to pay yourself first, before anyone else. This easily remedies laziness. The fourth one is bad habits. Learning to pay yourself first helps you overcome bad habits. You create the drive to find solutions and increase your income. The last reason is arrogance. Arrogance is often used to mask ignorance. Be more open to other people's opinions and stop thinking that you have all the answers. Learn from others. Accept their feedback with respect, and always remain humble no matter how successful you are. In Lesson 8, the book highlights the importance of developing these 10 steps to achieve financial success and freedom. The first step is you need to find a purpose. This can be difficult at first, but you need to find a greater reason to keep you motivated and resilient amidst obstacles. 
The second step is to make daily decisions. Your daily choices shape your financial future. Replace negative thoughts with actions that propel you towards your goals. The third step is to choose your friends wisely. Surround yourself with positive influences who support your aspirations in life. The fourth step is to continuously educate yourself and expand your skills. In today's fast-paced world, adaptability and learning agility are important. The fifth step is to develop self-discipline, and this means to prioritize paying yourself first to build your assets and reduce reliance on consumer debt. The sixth step is to seek guidance from experts when needed and recognize the value of quality information. The seventh step is to focus on investments that provide returns, aiming to break even quickly and minimize financial anxieties. The eighth step is to avoid borrowing for luxury items. Use your assets to fund such expenses instead. Discipline is key to avoiding debt traps. The ninth step is to L look up to and learn from financial role models who inspire you. Learn from them and incorporate their strategies into your own journey. The last step is to give and share. Share your knowledge and resources generously. Help others that they may succeed on their own and expect nothing in return. And this sums up all the valuable lessons from the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Hope this video opens your mind on how to become a well-rounded person when it comes to money talks. If you want more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and tap the notification button to stay updated on new videos.